She disappeared in a flash, but when I closed my eyes, I could see her beautiful face looking pleadingly in my direction. Sounds like romantic fiction, doesn't it? It's actually your iconic memory recalling a visual stimulus in its technicolor glory. And in this video, you'll learn all about iconic memory, why it's important, and how to improve it to enable better memory and recall. I'll also break a few myths about picture perfect or photographic memory, and we're getting started right now. Hi there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com where our community helps serious students and mature learners from all walks of life become more self-reliant through the use of memory techniques. If you're new here, get started now by hitting the subscribe button, enabling notifications, and hitting thumbs up for memory. Now, I'm going to refer to a ton of research resources in this video, but there's no particular place to click on a video screen, so if you want to join me in this reading, visit magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash iconic dash memory, and one clickable link for that is in the description box. And for best results, watch the entire video and pick two to three of the most interesting resources. Take notes, memorize the key terminology and big ideas, take a rest, and then come back for more. That's more or less how all accomplished learners operate. So what is iconic memory anyway? Well, iconic memory is one type of sensory memory. It's a short-term visual memory and lasts only a few seconds before getting discarded. Your brain uses iconic memory to remember for a brief time an image you have seen around you. Your sensory memory stores all information that you experience through your five major senses, touch, taste, sight, hearing, and smell. And such storage of all stimuli is an automatic response by your brain. If sufficient attention is given to the stimulus, the information may then pass into your short-term memory and from there it can get encoded into your long-term memory. However, in most cases, sensory information is thrown out within a few seconds. When you get a sensory input to your visual system, it goes into your iconic memory and the visual system includes the iconic memory, visual short-term memory, and long-term memory. Iconic memory is simply your brain's way of processing visual information. The brain sees this information as distinct flashes or icons, hence the name iconic. For instance, imagine you are driving through the countryside and a lovely cottage with a red front door flashes past. You continue to drive but can still see the image in your mind's eye. This after image of the cottage in your mind's eye, even after it ceases to exist in your visual plane, is the working of your iconic memory. Here are some other examples of iconic memory. Your friend is reading a book and you ask her which book it is. Your friend shows you the cover of the book for just a brief moment before hiding it, leaving you with only the impression or iconic memory of what the book's cover looked like. You come home one evening and as you turn on the living room light, the bulb burns out, leaving you in darkness. But your mind's eye can still visualize it, albeit briefly, what the room looked like in the luminance of the bulb. In other words, your brain takes a snapshot of every image it sees and stores that as an after image only for a few seconds in your iconic memory. So, is it like a camera taking a picture? Is it the same as photographic memory? Mm -mm. Iconic memory is not the same as a photographic memory. So let's get one thing clear. Photographic memory does not exist. The phenomenon where you have instantaneous recall of any and all events by uniting your visual, spatial, audio, and verbal memories is not possible by humans. Now you may have heard that Teddy Roosevelt could repeat aloud entire newspaper pages as if he was reading from it, or of artists like Arturo Toscanini, who was able to conduct the opera from memory after his eyesight became too poor to read the music. Many world champions can memorize and recall many digits of pi, but there is no verified case which shows memory working like a camera with total and complete recall. But what if you can remember your experience in great detail, right down to the color of the car that you took to go to Disneyland when you were five years old? Does that mean you have a photographic memory? Simple answer, no. What you can have is an eidetic memory, a memory that is very vivid and has great potential for recall. However, to clarify, eidetic memory is not photographic memory. It simply means you can remember many things in great detail, but not all the details. More importantly, eidetikers may even invent details that were never there. And as a quick side note, some researchers found that a mutated fruit fly could potentially possess a form of photographic memory. Over the course of their brief lives, a fruit fly with a boosted CREB gene could have a form of photographic memory. Now, while humans also share DNA with fruit flies, the potential for a similar boost in humans is yet to be researched. So, if iconic memory isn't photographic, why do we even need it? Seems unimportant, right? Maybe not, and you'll know more in a minute. But first, let's first understand how iconic memories are made. 
the occipital lobe is the central part of the brain involved in iconic memory. This lobe is responsible for processing and regulating visual information. When you see something, the visual information is received by the photoreceptor cells in the eyes and sent to the occipital lobe. Here it's stored for a few milliseconds before it is forgotten or transferred to the temporal lobe. And this visual memory or visual persistence is then converted from visual short-term memory to long-term memory by the hippocampus, which is located inside the temporal lobe. There may be psychological visual persistence of a visual stimulus for some time after its physical offset. There are three senses where it can persist. The first is neural persistence, which occurs when neural activity continues after the stimuli are gone. The second is visible persistence, when you continue to see an image even though it is gone, such as with a flash of bright light. The third is informational persistence, when an observer continues to retain information about a visual stimulus for some time after the stimulus is gone. And research into these three stages of visual persistence was done by Max Coulthart. In 1980, Max Coulthart performed research into the three stages of visual persistence. His study also suggests that any physical stimulus must be temporarily attached to a representation in semantic memory. However, episodic memory is not involved in this process. This temporary storage of information is what constitutes iconic memory. Now there's a lot more to say about iconic memory and it's very, very interesting and dense memory science. You can find out more at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash iconic dash memory or use the link below. But before we go, Let's talk about how you can improve iconic memory. Now, since iconic memory is one type of sensory memory, improving your overall sensory perceptions will result in better retention of visual information. Attention also plays a vital role in not only transferring information from iconic to working memory, but also when the iconic memory is formed. According to a study called Iconic Memory Requires Attention, the formation of iconic memory is disrupted when attention is diverted, even if that happens for a brief period of time. The human mind is capable of faultless information processing, just like a computer. It takes in information, organizes and stores it to be retrieved at a later time. However, for this information processing to be accurate, you need to be aware and deliberate in your learning. In sum, that means you need to be intentional to have better memory. When you are intentional, you perceive things better. Why is that? Because you are paying attention to everything around you. All your senses are sharper and focused on absorbing the information around you. Greater attention means better perception, which results in good memory. Memory exercises can be used to strengthen your attention, which in turn will improve retention and recall. However, your memory improvement training should always be linked to memorizing information that will immediately improve your life. It should always be measurable since tracking your outcomes leads to rapid improvement. And this is where creating memory palaces using the magnetic memory method can come in handy. It enables you to unlock the power of all types of memory, autobiographical, sensory, episodic, semantic, procedural, and more so that you can move information into long-term memory faster and with predictable and reliable permanence. And if you're keen to unlock your natural ability to learn and remember anything fast, get subscribed to this channel, get my free course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT, and try the Magnetic Mary Method today. Thanks as always for the view, and until next time, keep yourself magnetic.